Welcome to Homekeepers, uh, Don Fur. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And for sending me this um, book, which is so appropriate for this time of the year. I'd like to know a little bit more about you. You just just got here, really. Uh, when did you become a Christian? Well, uh, my spiritual birthday is March 30th, 1975. I have a dear friend in Memphis, and that's his his physical birthday, so it's easy to remember. And and under what circumstances? Well, I just uh, it came to a point in my life. I was uh, 20 years old at the time, and uh, God called me, and uh, it was time. So I just were you raised in a Christian home, or how much familiarity did you have with the whole story of Jesus and all that? Oh, I had a pretty good uh, uh, understanding of Christ, and uh, uh, you know, going through some uh, turbulent times uh, in the teenage years and all that. But uh, by the time I hit 20, I think it was uh, pretty apparent what I needed to do. Now, you're a helicopter pilot? Yes. I've been in one once. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Our network has a helicopter. And yeah. It's kind of funny when they're going to go somewhere, we all look out to see what's happening. It's kind of, kind of exciting, really. How come? Do you, do you use it in your business? or? Just uh, I used to fly for a TV station uh, in Memphis. And uh, I just do it mostly like for the fun. weather thing. Uh, we didn't do weather. Uh, we did a little bit of traffic, but uh, we were just uh, uh, headliners. Anything that was uh, top news, we would do that. And a music minister. Yes. I meet me too. Uh -huh, I was very a music good. Oh yeah, okay, for good. about twenty years. Yeah. Um, did you did you direct in the church? Are you? A Instrumentalist? I was a, a music minister from uh, 1976 through 1980 uh, at a little church called Egypt Baptist Church in uh, Shelby County in uh, Memphis. And I was a, a minister of music uh, after that at my church, First Baptist Church Lakeland, uh, for about five years there as well. Yeah. Now, did you always write from the time? When did you get a real interest in writing? Well, Interestingly enough, I uh, was reading the book Left Behind on an airplane, uh, of all things, in uh, 1996. I was on a, a flight from Memphis to um, Minneapolis, and uh, at the time, uh, if you remember the book, uh, the first part starts off with the rapture, mm -hmm. and uh, the people are on the plane, and the it plane. was so poignant, and it just grabbed me, and uh, I was lit literally weeping in my seat and was uh, explaining to the uh, flight attendant what was going on and I was pointing to the book and I was weeping. Uh, this is just the greatest book. And uh, it wasn't just a few months after that that uh, I thought, boy, I'd really like to tell my story too. So that's And when was that? That book hadn't been out that long. Oh yeah, 1996. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because usually when people write, it's something they discovered when they were in middle school or... Yeah. Well, C.S. Lewis uh, began writing the Chronicles of Narnia when he was 52, so, uh, you know. Well, you're ahead of him then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you've minutes. written screenplays. Yes. What, uh, what were well, those, and are they in movie form today? Uh, I have one a screenplay that I've written, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's great, um, and I have uh, kind of put that aside. Uh, I found that uh, writers, one of the things that you do as a writer is uh, it, it, it's um, a real problem too, is starting more than one project at a time. So I was mm -hmm. uh, persuaded to put that aside and, uh, and stay on the book. But I've also written uh, a lot of plays for, uh, we do a judgment house every year at my Yeah, now what's that know, about? I, I think I could guess, but yeah. you can tell, you tell me. Well, we have different uh, scenes in, in my church. Uh, and you go from scene to scene and it tells a story, um, you know, and, and at the last you have a chance to uh, come to Christ. And, um, well, last year alone uh, we uh, were able to uh, uh, lead 55 people to Christ. So uh, that was in a four-day period. So, Yeah, you know, that's powerful. I, I think churches should realize the impact of those kinds of ministries that reach people that a sermon will, yeah. will not reach. Quest for the nail prints, and I was remarking earlier this really, uh, not sure the camera shows this. Well, yes, uh, they have it on here. You can see the nail all the way through the book. And um, novelists 
I've done a little professional writing, not much, but novelists intrigue me because uh, they have an imagination that the Lord didn't give to me. And but he gave you something. Well, he gave oh, you something. Yeah. He, he gives you know. all of us something. Yeah, there you go. The, okay. um, the book, 13 years in the writing? 13 years, right. So the characters in the book, in 13 years, did they kind of go places and do things that you didn't have planned in the beginning? Did they kind of take on a life of their own? Uh, they did uh, a little bit. Um, I guess uh, the, the funniest part of the whole story was the, the, the book is about three different characters and their own three different personalities. And uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Jody Clemens, told me one day, he said, Don, he said, you know, all three of these people are you. And I thought, you know what, you're exactly right. They were all me in different parts of my Christian walk. Uh, there is a, you know, there is a, an agnostic uh, professor. There Were you there is for a, a while? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, close. Uh -huh. And and uh, there is a, a young believer uh, that is a doctor, and then there's a seasoned believer pastor. And um, uh, ironically enough, um, what was real interesting was the story was about three men. Uh, it was called Three Men in Time. And uh, when my publisher uh, approached me, she said, uh, well, uh, I love the book. I love everything except one thing. I want one of the characters to be a woman. So I Good had to. <laughs> Good for her. So I had to change that, and that was great. It was a lot of fun. Now I love words. I love good wordsmiths. I mentioned Gloria Gaither's one of the greatest yeah. writers ever. And when I read just your "Why Not Dream" kind of a opening here, I thought this is one good writer. Really, You're one good kind. writer. I'm not kidding. Now, you love the concept of time travel. So explain exactly what that is for all those who did not see the movie Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we all know time, uh, you know, as something that happens that can't be changed. But, you know, let's go the what if route and say, well, what if time could be changed? What if uh, we could uh, do things with time that, that aren't normal? What if we could go back and change things or maybe mistakes that we have oh, done? Yeah. Would we not want to do that? Uh, so that's sort of the idea. It's always fascinated me, um, of course, Einstein and his theories and, and all those. But it, it's, just a, it's just a wonderful thing. And, you know, when the movie Back to the Future came out, uh, I, uh, I was mesmerized by it. And uh, that was my wife and my first date. By the so way, that might and, uh, also yeah. explain being mesmerized. Uh, yeah. So now, in uh, quest for the nail prints, yes. these people go back to Jerusalem. They, they're going back. Yes. Do you ever envision yourself by writing a novel where you go forward into uh, the future? No, I haven't. I haven't thought about oh, that. The future, future would be very difficult, I mm -hmm. think, for me. But you call this your uh, your passion, oh, yeah. time travel. Yeah. So you like going backward. Yeah. More than go, more than going forward. Okay, give give us a, a little bit of an outline. You've kind of sketched a little bit, but uh, how come these people all end up in Jerusalem? Well, uh, basically, the book starts off uh, three people who don't know each other. They uh, come together on an airplane. I don't want to give away too much, but mm -hmm. they come together on an, on an airplane. They're flying uh, on a flight to uh, uh, to Tel Aviv. And uh, two of them are going directly to Tel Aviv. One of them is going on to New Delhi. And uh, they strike up a conversation. And lo and behold, uh, a, a friendship forms uh, with uh, at least two of them. And uh, they end up together in Jerusalem. The book really starts, I think, in Chapter 9. And uh, that's where uh, they get in a situation with, uh, with an Israeli guard. And, uh, and lo and behold, uh, some things happen. And, uh, uh, the next thing you know, they're standing in the street uh, of old Jerusalem as Jesus uh, comes in uh, on they the donkey. They actually encountered Jesus, That's right? right. In the book. Yeah. And how does that? How does the is the change different for each character when they encounter Jesus? Oh, uh, counts, oh, absolutely. Changes their life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually doing a sequel, and the sequel is about their life as it is As it changed. goes on. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you want people to take away from this book after they read it? <clears throat> I want them to, to see Jesus on a personal level. 
uh, I had one person read the book and uh, she gave me an endorsement and she said, uh, oh, uh, she just loved the book. She said, it made Jesus so personal to me. She said, uh, there was, there's one particular part in the book where uh, one of the disciples says something, Jesus turns and rolls his eyes. And, <laughs> and just that one thing, uh, she said, it just made Jesus so real to me. I think he ever yeah. rolled his eyes uh, when Peter said oh, something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, how has this affected your own walk with the Lord? Well, uh, I can tell you in one statement, my wife says that I'm a better man when I'm writing. And uh, I think that's so. She all. wants to make time for you to write. Uh, She'll she do anything really to make does. you comfortable yeah, when yeah, you write. Yeah. If you just tuned in, I'm talking with Don Fur, the author of this brand new book, Quest for the Nail Prince. It is a novel. The website is on your screen. Can they get this through the website? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And uh, no doubt you'll see it in your Christian bookstores, but um, I certainly, certainly urge you uh, to check that out. Uh, since you've done this, are, are like the rituals or whatever you want to call them of your church a little more meaningful? The reason I ask that is I was minister of music in a, well, all of my life really in the Assembly of God Church. And then I found myself in Central Christian Church for five years as a minister of music. And they served communion every Sunday where the church I came from did not do it that often. Mm -hmm. And I so missed it. Uh, it, it came alive to me, in other words. And when you delve this deeply into that special time with Jesus and you write a novel that takes 13 years, yes. I just wonder how much more those things come to life in your own spirit. Well, very much so. Um, to the point to, uh, I'm giving some of the book away, but that's okay. Uh, my characters uh, are able to, to share in that with uh, with the disciples, and um, it doesn't change scripture at all. Uh, you'll just have to read it, but it's uh, uh, that particular part of the book and, and uh, all the way from, from Passover night on into the next day and the crucifixion, they all witness it. And um, I, I just literally weep when I read it to this day, but uh, just thinking about standing there in the street and watching him and knowing what's gonna happen and being able to stand there and not get involved was the hardest thing that they could do. That would be uh, pretty thought provoking. Yeah. Did you find yourself researching more and more and more those scriptures of, of what we call Holy Week? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you had to if you're going to incorporate that in, in a book with this kind of a title. Absolutely. It has to be accurate. Yeah, yeah, it is very accurate all the way down. Um, you know, like I said, nothing has been changed in Scripture. Uh, this is a, a fictitious account of an actual event. That is the same thing that Ben-Hur was, uh, the movie Ben-Hur. Mm -hmm. Nothing was changed. This is a story within a story. So, uh. so <clears throat> I've, I've often said, as a minister of music, and you perhaps could support this, that people who really benefit from <clears throat> the big musicals that we have done are the people in it. And they walk away with something in their soul that I, I think the observer does not. I would think after all, you 13 years, did, mm. what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a business that yeah. I run and uh, that takes a lot because I travel a lot. But, you know, also in traveling, I was able to write a lot as well. But um, it just takes me a long time. But now this, the, the sequel is, is moving very fast. I've written five years worth in about five months, so it's gotten a lot easier. Yeah, we had a wonderful writer <clears throat> in the network a few years ago, and a young man who in the network was a writer too. He'd done some professional writing, and he asked him, what's the secret? He said, edit, edit, edit. That's so, right. 13 years, I would say this thing has been edited yes. to death. Yes, it has. <laughs>